The offensive aura tree can be divided pretty much into three categories, offensive boosters, area damage, and oddball utility. Today we're going to be covering that third category, which is comprised of two often misunderstood auras. Despite being some of the most talked about skills in the entire game, Conviction and Thorns are both skills that many players often forget or just don't know the full functionality of, which results in them leaving a lot of potential power on the cutting room floor. Starting with the less popular of the two, Thorns, we have the most well-known but sadly rarely used Damage Retaliation skill, which with 2.4 received an interesting buff in the form of now dealing flat damage in addition to percent damage. Now, the way Thorns works is that it only functions against enemies attacking within melee range, so it is a bit useless against ranged opponents, which are usually the bigger threat in Diablo 2, so you can see why it's a bit less popular. That said, it has utilities that are often ignored, especially if there are any allied summons in play against act bosses. This is because the percent damage retaliation is based off the amount of physical melee damage an enemy deals to an allied character. Which, while for players, this is nothing special, it's important to remember that act bosses deal double damage to mercenaries and quadruple damage to summons. So by taking advantage of this, as well as something like amplified damage, a pack of necro or druid summons, or even stuff like Valkyries or Shadows can soak melee hits from each of the bosses and actually reflect significant damage, especially considering they will often have larger life pools or at least larger numbers to compensate at higher levels. Now, as far as the flat damage from Thorns, this is more just a nice to have these days since the way it functions is based around just the enemies swinging in melee, so whether they hit or not, this gives Thorns the ability to at least return some damage. Though it is worth noting, it's not quite enough like damage in general to make a big difference in late Nightmare or Hell, so if you're using it then, you're usually using it as part of a summoner party or specifically against bosses and using a separate aura for other situations, which surprising to some will ideally be something like today's second aura, Conviction. Though before we hit that, the last little bit of housekeeping for Thorns is that it only deals physical damage and it is affected by physical resists, for better or worse. So it is garbage against physical immunes, but great against amplified targets. The other thing to remember is Thorns has reduced efficiency against players and mercenaries to the order of dealing 1 eighth damage, so don't expect this to be some amazing PvP trick just to use against like spin to win barbarians. Now, as far as Conviction goes, most people know about its resist functions because it's used so bloody often by lightning sources, javazons, and trapsins through the Infinity Rune Word, though a lot of new or intermediate players will have at least one misunderstanding about this skill, either in understanding how it works for resists, or defense, or in terms of contested aura checks. Starting with its most popular use, Minus Resistances, it is one of only two ways to break elemental immunities in the game. The other one is the Curse Lower Resist. Just like with Salvation and Boosting Resist though, Conviction only affects Lightning, Fire, and Cold Resists, and against immunities it works at one-fifth the normal efficiency. So even with its maximum level, it can only reduce immune creature resists by 30% by itself, since it tops out at 150. And this effect is applied at the same time as lower resists effect in regards to damage checks, so even if one skill would break the immunity, they are both penalized this way. This means that you often want to combine it with facet style effects, since they are applied after the break, meaning if you break an immunity with conviction, a rainbow facet will work at its full listed value, while lower resist will still only work at one fifth. Whereas if you don't break the immunity, the rainbow facet will have absolutely zero effect. Now why it's used so often for lightning is because lightning is the easiest element to break the immunity of, since most lightning immune monsters rarely pass 100% resists, while fire immunes often sit in the 110 to 130 range, and cold immunes are often 140% or even higher, with only a few exceptions in each case. So you can see why people like infinity for lightning builds, while the low level of conviction on infinity keeps it from being useful for the other two. Now, one area where people ignore conviction is in regards to defense, especially in the situation we mentioned earlier with summons. Because, let's be honest, summons very often have awful attack ratings, so conviction reducing enemies' defense by upwards of 80%, even at those low levels, will make a significant impact on their chance to hit, greatly improving their overall damage over time by reducing the complete misses. 
This can also be really useful if you or your allies are having trouble hitting in a team where you just happen to be undergeared or underleveled, since more hits means more leeching, means more triggers, and more damage for you as well. The last aspect of conviction is contested auras, something you pretty much only see talked about in regards to Uber Mephisto, but it also applies to random aura enchanted enemies in the wild that just happen to roll conviction. The way it works on the individuals with conviction is the highest aura win situation if, if both auras are active before encountering each other. And if tied, there are some fun mechanics you can mess around with by forcing an enemy's conviction to lower their own resists and defense until they swap auras, which enemies like monsters don't, even if you change yours. But it's convoluted and rare to come across, so most people stick with just packing a level 25 conviction and going for max functionality and max override. Now, as far as overrides and why we mention having them active before encountering, and it's important to reiterate that only matters if both auras were activated before or interacting, if you switch to Conviction after already being under it, the rules will change despite the character screen not really reflecting it. It basically becomes a first come first serve situation. If you want to override a Conviction, even with a higher level one, you need to disengage, lose the enemy Conviction, switch to yours, and then re-engage the enemy. It doesn't display right on your screen, but you will feel the difference as the older one will actually generally wipe out the newer one. So only ones applied at the same time will behave as you expect. Hopefully that was a clear enough explanation on Conviction, as it's a fairly convoluted situation whenever it comes to the contested auras, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them below. The only stupid question is the one you never ask. Well, that and a question several months back asking about how to find the Cold Plains waypoint, but we don't talk about that. And as always, a special thanks to the channel patrons, members, and Twitch subscribers for their continued support of the channel's ever-expanding content.